Cities today are a complete mess, especially in the Western world. The main problem with cities there is that they are meant for cars, not for human interaction. Planners in the old days thought that cars were the future of mobility and transport. And that is why we should build cities for them. But because of that move, cities suffer the consequences. So it begs the question, how do we build a good city? To solve the problem, there are seven main principles to making a very good city. Starting off, we need to preserve the natural environment and the history of the city. This gives a reason for people to visit your city because Every part of this planet is different, and urban planners need to show how a city was formed and make room for people to enjoy after work. The city of Vancouver is a great example because it has parks within a 10 minute walk for almost all residents. It has been shown that getting in nature helps us stay more happy, and most cities should try to show their unique way of life. Second, we need mixed use development. but. What is mixed-use development, you may ask? When we build homes now, they are built on land that can only be built for homes. Or when we build commercial, we only build on land that is designated for commercial use. And in most cases, the commercial development happens in the city center, and residential development happens on the outer part of the city. This makes for traffic and rush hour as commuters get to work. This makes it hard for everyone. This problem has gotten so bad that sometimes in Toronto, it takes 6 hours to get from the suburbs to the city. And when it snows really bad, the city shuts down. But the better way of building could be that the, on the upper levels of the building, we can build apartments. And on the street level, we can build shops. This means that there's not only more housing in the city, it's more efficient. And now, someone can get a good job somewhere closer to home. You sometimes see this happening in European cities, except Britain. The next big thing is walking, and it normally comes when we start to build a mixed-use community. And cities should encourage walkers by making car-free streets, or making a reason to walk. The fourth big thing is biking. And you will hear me repeat biking and walking a lot later in the video. Because biking is the most efficient method of transport. This starts with making bike lanes everywhere, so you can bike to any part of the city. Not only is this a good exercise, it also makes no pollution. And it starts off like this. Some people get tired of traffic, so they start to bike sooner, and more and more people start to bike. Then, surprisingly, people get less fat, and traffic goes down. By making car free streets, you not only anger drivers, they start to bike as well. Some countries, like the Netherlands, love to bike, despite it being cold and rainy, so this can be done anywhere. So stop whining about I can't bike because it's raining, because the Dutch do it all the time, despite their country has a lot of rain. Fifth is we need our city built on a grid and reduce the size of city blocks like Portland or New York, because it makes it simpler to walk if the city block is smaller than it being larger, and increase the amount of pedestrian ways and bike lanes, and make there more than one way to get anywhere around the city. This distributes the traffic amount on all the streets. Sixth is we need to build affordable public transport. We need to build public transport because most cities don't have it. Sure that your city might have transit, but the part where it's affordable makes a whole difference. The thing is that if you make a walkable city, you can only build it so large, and when it gets bigger, people start to get into the car again. But the main thing that we want to do is we don't want that to happen, so we need to make sure that there's an alternate option, and that is mass, mass transit. And part of the reason I'm saying affordable is that a city has different types of people. They are very rich people, and very poor people. For a lower income family, making ends meet is quite difficult because in the suburbs, the primary mode of transportation is a car, and driving is very expensive. That is because there is a lot of cost associated with having a car like insurance, gas, and maintenance. Also, a fact that having most of the city with an access of mass transit makes the city more richer, and poor people 
are more likely to get off poverty because they can get a job in the city center. And seven is that we need to apply all those things that I have mentioned into a functional city. This means that with all that you have learned, you can possibly make one really good city. Thanks for watching, and I hope you really liked this video. It was a hard one to make, so please try to make sure that more people see this and share and like and subscribe. All those things. Bye.